Hello everyone, I'm Peter Koverbica. By day I work as a managing director for a registered investment advisory firm and for an investment bank which provides growth capital for startups and mergers and acquisitions advice. But like you, I love creative writing. I live among the redwoods in Northern California, about a half an hour from Silicon Valley. I grew up on a commercial cattle ranch and I've seen a lot of changes as a fifth generation California native. The poem which I will read to you is entitled A Typical Modern Chilean Day. It's featured on page 199 in the anthology Mingled Voices 5. The title is a bit ironic because I'm not sure there's anything typical or modern about it. You'll note references to our current pandemic and recognize that the narrator interacts with none other than the great Pablo Neruda. A Typical Modern Chilean Day It was a typical modern Chilean day, which chugged through jungle hills like a diesel until it found us hiding in the little town of Peral. I had spent the morning measuring relics of radiation from the Big Bang but these were the strangest times, and due to the shortage of trained doctors, scientists like me were enlisted to pick up the slack. We were the frontline soldiers, tasked with reanimating souls from near death. Only when a country is truly sick will you be able to experience the terror of its petty dictators. I half expected frogs to land upon our rooftops whenever it rained, and flies to gather like dark clouds. We washed our hands, threw smocks over our khakis, and donned our masks. We did our best to keep bodies out of the refrigerated trucks parked in front of the hospital. I knew the laborers were tired of digging. I had seen rows of them lean on their picks and shovels, as if the tools were all that were holding them upright. We were all in this together, even the musicians who had to leave their violins in velvet cases, and the women who would sit at the windows in loose-fitting blouses with cigarettes in their fingers. My feet were barking like dogs when I sat down with my neighbor, known for his dark eyebrows and hibernating like the cleverest bear into the hearts of beautiful women. Balding, the poet was happiest wearing a hat and puffed on a pipe while in his wicker chair. Though he had been dead for years, his voice still had a way of sounding out silken syllables, reminding me of how wealthy men talk to women, offhanded, friendly, and familiar, as if their audience was filled only with confidants or concubines. Fame pursued him like a trotting coyote after a spotted fawn, and he tired of it because it distracted him from his favorite pastime, writing short poems about his past infidelities, which he would pull line by line from the carved rosewood box of his mind. Despite being a communist, he knew the cut of a good suit, but the late afternoon was still too hot today for that his jacket slung over the back of his chair, and a map of perspiration ran down the side of his shirt, like a thin country hugging a fat continent. Silly to think that we have been at war for years over who first came up with the Pisco Sour, he said. It was good to hear a man who could write about the universe in a lover's eye also discuss something so inane and simple on a typical modern Chilean day.